Hello kind people of YouTube and welcome back to another video. As always today we are going to take a quick look at the crypto markets and then continue on with the news of the day. And then if you stick around to the very end there will be a little channel update as well. Anyways, let's start by refreshing CoinMarketCap right now. So we have the latest data and as we see here the markets are sliding a tiny tiny bit from 24 hours ago. Um, Actually, when I made the video yesterday, it wasn't exactly 24 hours to, um, before now. So compared to yesterday's video, everything's actually kind of the same. The prices have gone up a bit and then fell by roughly the same amount again. But if we're comparing to 24 hours ago, we see everything slide by about 1% to 2%. The biggest losers in the top 10 are once again XRP and Bitcoin Cash. Of course, those two cryptos have also had probably the best performance in the last month or so. So it does make sense that they would drop a bit more after making such spectacular gains. XRP is still at almost twice the value it was at just about a month ago, when it went from, I believe, 27 cents to almost 80 in just a couple days. It has lost significantly since then, but it's still almost twice the value it was before. So in my opinion, no grounds to worry here. But yeah, when, if we're looking at this, nothing really out of the ordinary, everything up or down a few percent. Um, 0x, I believe that's how you pronounce it, I've actually never heard someone read it out, is up 4%, Bitcoin Gold down 4%, and Bitcoin down 19%. Aside from that, not a lot of movement. Market cap, still at 219 billion, almost 220 billion. That is pretty much exactly where it has been for a couple days now. And Bitcoin dominance at 52.3% is also unchanged. Um, XRP market volume is continuing to fall. Um, this is probably primarily represented in a lot less fear of missing out. Um, just before the swell event and before XRapid went live, we had a lot of people flowing into XRP. That seems to have stopped and with that we see less volume right now. Anyway, let's jump into the articles and let's start with analysis before we move on to actual news. This article from Coindesk and of course all the articles will be linked in the description so you can read the entirety. For most of these I will not read the whole thing but only about half or so. So we get what it is about. But let's read this one and this one I'll probably read fully. Bitcoin saw a low, a low volume bullish breakout on Monday, but the long awaited move is sending mixed signals to investors. The leading cryptocurrency cleared the trend line sloping downwards from the July 25th high and September 5th high around midday yesterday, adding credence to the argument put forward by many, including billionaire investor Novogratz, that the market has carved out a long term bottom around $6,000. However, so far, the bullish trend change hasn't significantly revved up investor interest. This is evident from the fact that the total trading volume rose by a meager 15% yesterday, according to CoinMarketCap. More importantly, 24-hour trading volume is holding below $4 billion, near the yearly low so far. Further, the follow-through has not been impressive either. By now, one would have expected Bitcoin to be trading above last week's high of $6,741 after all the breakout occurred after a prolonged period of low volatility action. Instead, it is trading at $6,650 at press time and is holding just above the trendline support of $6,630. Hence, there is merit in being cautious despite Bitcoin's move above the falling trendline. As seen in the daily chart, Bitcoin closed above the 2.5 month long falling trendline yesterday, signaling a bullish reversal. However, the lackluster response to the upside break likely indicates that investors need a more credible evidence of a bullish breakout. The cryptocurrency is likely to adopt a stronger bullish bias if it can cross the next key hurdle at $6,775 on the back of strong volumes. As can be seen, Bitcoin has been struggling to find acceptance above the 10-day exponential moving average since mid-September. Therefore, Bitcoin's upside break of the trendline as seen in the daily chart would look more convincing once the 10-day EMA is scaled. And their view, which sums up everything and their outlook. Bitcoin took a bullish turn Monday, opening doors for a rally to $7,000, but low volume suggests caution is advised. The bullish move will look more legitimate if the 24-hour trading volume crosses $5 billion in the next few hours. 
The outlook would change from cautiously bullish to strongly bullish if Bitcoin can rise above the 10 week EMA at $6,712. As per the daily chart, a move above the upper Bollinger Band of $6,775 would also bolster the bullish setup. A UTC close back below the 2.5 month long falling trend line would neutralize the immediate bullish scenario. A break below the October 3rd low of $6,424 would put the bears back into the driver's seat. So here we are seeing a tiny glimmer of hope of a bullish reversal and yet more evidence that we might have found a long term bottom here. But it is absolutely too early to get excited about a bull market. Because despite seemingly bottoming out, the momentum is not quite there for an upturn yet. And um, in the hours after this article, it did not cross these, um, <laughs> these um, thresholds. So let's be cautious about this for now. Anyway, continuing on, we have some long term prospects or rather midterm CNBC analyst predicts Bitcoin price is about to explode citing ETF fuss, uh, fuss, buzz. Cryptocurrency analyst Ran Neuner, host of the CNBC show Crypto Trader, believes Bitcoin prices are about to explode, citing bullish market buzz about the near term possibility of an SEC approved Bitcoin ETF. I just bought Bitcoin for my parents, it's too obvious that it's about to explode, he tweeted on October 7th. Neuner said the mounting expectation that the Securities and Exchange Commission could soon approve a Bitcoin ETF could send prices through the roof. And that is pretty much all we need to know here. There is more in the article. But this is an argument we have seen a lot lately that if ETFs are approved, the price would go flying. The only question is, will they be approved? We will know by early November, um, I believe their deadline for reviewing the, um, their decision is November 5th. Um, who knows how long it would actually take them, but I assume by the second week of November, we should have some solid information on whether at least one of these proposed ETFs has been approved. Just one should be enough to make tremendous change in the crypto world. And if they were to approve all of them, I believe they're reviewing nine or seven, nine or seven, it's a number somewhere around there. That would be absolutely huge, not just for Bitcoin, but for um, the crypto world in general, that would set a precedent, a legal precedent for future ETFs, not just on Bitcoin, but on pretty much most cryptocurrencies. So if that were to happen, I can definitely see a price explosion as well. The only question is, will it happen? And um, in my personal opinion, based on what I read, what, um, based on who is on the, um, on the panel, who gets to make the, um, the commission decision, um, I think there is a, we are pretty much down 50, 50, um, just the fact that they are reviewing them is a good sign, but who knows? Um, they did recently add a commissioner who is very much pro crypto. So there are some chances there. Anyway, if, instead of thinking about how people could potentially become rich overnight, well, it probably won't be overnight, but in a short period, let's look at some people who have made immense riches from crypto already. And surprisingly, the richest person in the crypto sphere, or at least the person who has become richest off crypto, is the co-founder of Ripple. Yes, it's not someone involved with Bitcoin, not someone involved with Ethereum, but the co-founder of the company behind the number three token. Ripple's co-founder Chris Larson becomes the first cryptocurrency man listed in the Forbes 400. The Forbes 400, of course, is the list of the 400 wealthiest people in the world. Um, with most, with their numbers generally being um, being estimates, though, so um, it's not completely clear how how accurate they are most of the time. Forbes published its latest list of the 400 wealthiest people on Earth, where Chris Larson takes 383rd place with an estimated net wealth of 2.1 billion US dollars. First place is occupied by Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos, who finally wrenched the leadership from Bill Gates. Chris Larson's appearance in the Forbes 400 list is remarkable in that he is the only person in the list who made his money on digital assets. Being a co-founder of Ripple, he owns a share in the company and about 5.19 billion XRP tokens. And that is pretty much all we need to see here as well. They continue on a bit about how the value has fallen since obviously at the beginning of the year, XRP was worth a lot more than it is now and Ripple as a company has also lost a bit of value accordingly. But the important thing to take away from this is that for the first time, the Forbes 400 list, that is the most important list you're looking at when you're trying to find out who 
has importance, influence, wealth in the world. For the first time ever, there is a crypto person on that list and it is the co-founder of Ripple. That means there will be profiles written about him. There will be um, there will be think pieces about what this means for world finance. This is very exciting and uh, it shows us once again that uh, a lot of money has flown into Ripple and into the XRP token, but also Ripple, the company. They are dealing with a lot of assets and they if any company in the crypto world has the has the chance realistically to change things to really make a change to develop new products that are being used by large companies it is ripple with all the money and influence behind them anyway while we're on the topic of forbes forbes is also going to use blockchain in another way forbes partners with blockchain based journalism platform to publish content International business media outlet Forbes has partnered with blockchain-based platform Civil to publish its content on a decentralized network, Civil's co-founder confirmed on Medium on Tuesday. According to Civil co-founder Matt Coolidge, Forbes is integrating Civil software into its own content management system. From the beginning of 2019, journalists will be able to upload their data to the Civil network while posting it to the Forbes website simultaneously. So what we're seeing here is they're putting blockchain next to their traditional centralized solution um, as a second pillar and pretty much testing out how it works. But back to the article. Forbes, a US based, uh, um, ah, sorry, Forbes, a US business news outlet founded in 1917, reaches more than 120 million people globally through its main and local editions. According to US news outlet Axios, the new process will initially apply only to crypto related news items. However, if Forbes consider the experiment to be successful, other pieces will be posted on blockchain as well. Forbes is also going to extend decentralized solutions to its vast contributors network. Axios writes that through the, um, Axios writes that through the use of smart contracts, Forbes authors can upload their articles to Forbes um, content management system and then share them on other platforms such as LinkedIn and Medium. According to Coolidge, Forbes is also planning to experiment with new methods of reader engagement. He also states that the use of a decentralized platform can help the media to ensure no third party can remove or alter the content. So once again, we see here the immutability of, of blockchain as the core argument here. Civil has previously partnered with major news agency Associated Press. Um, the global media agency plans to use blockchain for intellectual rights, tracking its content usage and supporting ethical journalism. The AP is also going to store its content in the Civil network as a part of the trial so that news agencies can have immediate access to the reports. Um, if you don't know who or what the Associated Press is, um, the Associated Press isn't a news outlet as much as it's a meta outlet. Um, the Associated Press is writing news for other news outlets who can either buy the articles from them directly or who can cite them as a source. Um, the big point behind the Associated Press is also supposed to be that it's impartial and that it doesn't have an editorial um, opinion that is being pushed. Of course, you can never completely get rid of that, but that is their intent and they are absolutely huge with that. As Cointelegraph wrote earlier, Adblock Plus developer IOGMBA created a blockchain-based browser extension Trusted News to detect fake news and label websites accordingly. Adblock reported plans to move the database for the project to the Ethereum blockchain and to issue MetaCert tokens to track rewards and prevent manipulations. Now that isn't actually directly related to this, but they wrote an article about it earlier, so they put it in here because they're both about news and blockchain. But this of course doesn't have anything directly to do with either Forbes or Associated Press or with Civil. But anyway, this another step in a good direction. Of course, they are testing this out, so it will all be about how well it runs and if they find it gives them value. But I'm hopeful that we might see this rolled out, not just to their news about blockchain, but to all their news in the near future. Um, in the past, Forbes has shown that it's willing to use new technologies and to, um, to spearhead them in the, um, in the international, in the mainstream discussion. So that is good to hear. Anyway, something less positive now. Uh, Rubini calls Buterin a dictator, falsely claims crypto is centralized. Now, this is about Noel Rubini. I don't know if I pronounced the name correctly. Um, famous critic, um, he's or rather famously critical. Um, he's well known for making some predictions about the traditional financial market and the, its crash that um, were accurate because um, he saw what everybody should have seen but he seems to be a bit more off base on crypto. Anyway, let's read this. 
Um, decentralization, as decentralization in crypto is a myth. It is a system more centralized than North Korea. Miners are centralized, exchanges are centralized, developers are centralized, dictators. And he calls Buterin a dictator for life here. And the Gini co inequality coefficient of Bitcoin is worse than North Korea, he said. Now, there are kernels of truth to individual parts of this statement, but they don't make the entire statement true. Now, crypto as a whole is not centralized. The technology below it allows for decentralization. And if they run as they are supposed to, blockchains are decentralized. Now, it is true that, that miners can be centralized, that exchanges are centralized, that developers can be centralized. Even then, that is not always the case. And these don't come together to make crypto as a whole centralized. I think this might be a misunderstanding of how crypto, um, how blockchain technology works from his point of view. Also, the Gini inequality coefficient is not actually that re relevant here because um, that is about how the money in any given realm is spread. That is about who owns a large percentage, um, how equal the holdings are. Like it says here, it's an inequality, uh, inequality coefficient. That's not necessarily the same as not decentralized. Um, inequal does not mean centralized. So that is another misunderstanding here. Now that is a good point to bring up because if you if you look at um, crypto through that lens, you see that very few people hold the vast majority of wealth. And that is to be expected anywhere in the world. And there are some questions to ask, um, what happens if too many people, uh, if too few people hold too much of the wealth in a blockchain? Can they attack it? Can they do things with it that you wouldn't want them to do? Can they control it? And in some cases, a few people could come together and do that. But in general, this is not an attack or rather this is not a valid argument to apply to cryptocurrencies in general. Um, like I said, there's kernels of truth to individual claims here, but it doesn't come together to make the argument he thinks it makes. Especially like, yes, the Gini inequality coefficient of Bitcoin is technically worse than North Korea. Yeah, that that is true. That doesn't mean what he thinks it means, though. That just means very few Bitcoin accounts are holding the majority of the worth. That doesn't mean the system itself is not decentralized on a technological level. That just means there are some issues to how the system might be abused by people who hold too much. And the comparison to North Korea here, of course, is supposed to ring alarm bells because North Korea, obviously a terrible authoritarian dictatorship that is terribly abusing its citizens. Bitcoin is, of course, not that. So this, this he said this for headlines. And I mean, I'm playing into it right now. I'm reporting on it, but it's just, it's ridiculous. Um, if you read this article, there are more insights on why crypto as a whole is not centralized. They're going into it here. But I think if you're watching this channel, you probably understand. Anyways, the last piece of news for today, we have another stablecoin launching in Japan, and it's another one pegged to the yen. Um, I believe at this current point, we only have ones pegged to the dollar. But there are more coming and there's multiple coming for the yen and this is the latest one. So let's read this quickly. Japanese internet conglomerate GMO Internet Co. Limited confirmed plans to release a cryptographic stablecoin, Cointelegraph Japan reports Tuesday, packed to the Japanese yen. GMO, which entered the Japanese cryptocurrency exchange market in May last year, intends to begin issuing tokens dubbed GMO Japanese yen, G. Um, GJY during the 2019 financial year. Uh, keep in mind the financial year in Japan begins in April and ends in March. So the 2019 financial year is 1st of April 2019 until 31st of March in 2020. The news marks a further potential player in the yen packed stablecoin market, with several other corporations signaling their intention to launch assets of their own in recent months. G GMO confirmed the main impetus behind this decision was to target international remittances. Uh, so pretty much the same thing that XRP is trying to do. And XRP is, of course, going heavily into the Japanese market. We have banks and trust licenses in Japan. So we will issue GJY in Asia, but we can store assets in Japan as well. The founder and president Masatoshi Kumagai told CT Japan, adding, if that happens, everyone will not be worried like with Tether. It can be said that GMO has a bank there and keeps fiat there. So their large advantage is supposed to be they are keeping fiat locally in Japan to give that security, that stability that people want. 
Let's see how this turns out. It is still far off at least half a year, so we will probably hear more about this in the future. But they are already established in the Japanese crypto world, so they, it looks like they have a pretty good shot here. <clears throat> anyway, that is where I'm gonna end the news for today's video. Last but not least, I wanted to give a small channel update. Um, first of all, um, this channel has grown significantly since I started it less than two months ago. I'm about to hit 1,500 subscribers and I'm honestly still amazed by that. Um, thanks to everyone who keeps watching these and who wants to hear my opinions, I'm always amazed by that. But um, um, a few of you have given me donations, like one of donations through, um, through crypto donations or through PayPal with the links in the description, which I'm super thankful for. Right now, I'm not making any other money from this channel. It is not yet monetized. Um, if you see ads before or during my videos, all the money from that is just going to YouTube because my channel is not accepted for monetization right now. Um, I'm aiming to change the share, but um, just so you know, all the money I'm getting from the channel right now are those donations, so anything is really appreciated. Um, a couple people have asked if there is a way to automate donations to the channel, which until yesterday there was not, but I just wanted to let you guys know I have started a Patreon now. Um, and I would really appreciate any support there. But even if you want, if you don't want to support me, then it's also perfectly fine. I'm gonna keep my content free. These daily videos will forever be free. I don't want to charge people for that. And um, right now, there are some minor rewards. Um, I will write everyone a personalized message who um, supports me here. And if you give $3 or more a month, I will also put your name in the video descriptions as a special thanks because you are helping this channel um, grow and advance and I will be able to make better videos um, once I can put some funding into the channel as well. And who knows where I'll be able to get. Um, I will aim to come up with more and better tiers with better rewards in the future. I just don't quite know what to do. I was thinking I could do some um, Patreon exclusive live streams if enough people sign up or maybe a Discord that is exclusive or, um, or question and answer videos. Um, but like I said, the main content of the channel, the daily update videos, those will always remain free. I appreciate everyone just watching this, but um, if you do like the content I make here and would like to support me, even with just $1 a month, I would really, really, really appreciate that. The Patreon link is in the description. Hey, you could become my first Patreon, you know? That would be awesome. Or rather my first Patreon, because... Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to end the video with this announcement. Don't worry, I won't be talking about this for three minutes in every video. I will just mention it in one sentence from now on. Just wanted to let you guys know, and if anyone wants to support me, it will be deeply, deeply, deeply appreciated. Anyway, I'm gonna end the video here. Now, keep in mind, of course, all the links to these articles, as well as my social media links, and all ways to support the channel, including the Patreon, are in the description. And um, if you like this kind of uh, videos, please also make sure to subscribe. I put them out every single day. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you guys again soon.